Section 7 of the Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. Section 7 To Mrs. German at her house in Gloucester. Dear Madam, Having no mother of my own, I hope you will give me leave to disburden my poor heart to you, who have always acted the part of a kind parent to me ever since I was put under your care. Indeed, and indeed, my worthy governess may believe me when I assure her that I never harboured a thought that was otherwise than virtuous, and, if God will give me grace, I shall never behave so as to cast a reflection on the care you have taken in my education. I confess I have given just cause of offence by my want of prudence and experience. I ought not to have listened to what the young man had said, and it was my duty to have told you all that passed, but I was ashamed to mention it. And then he behaved so modest and respectful, and seemed to be so melancholy and timorous, that I could not find in my heart to do anything that should make him miserable and desperate. As for familiarities, I do declare I never once allowed him the favour of a salute, and as to the few letters that passed between us, they are all in my uncle's hands, and I hope they contain nothing contrary to innocence and honour. I am still persuaded that he is not what he appears to be, but time will discover. Meanwhile, I will endeavour to forget a connection which is so displeasing to my family. I have cried without ceasing, and have not tasted anything but tea, since I was hurried away from you. Nor did I once close my eyes for three nights running, my aunt continues to chide me severely when we are by ourselves, but I hope to soften her in time by humility and submission. My uncle, who was so dreadfully passionate in the beginning, has been moved by my tears and distress, and is now all tenderness and compassion, and my brother is reconciled to me on my promise to break off all correspondence with that unfortunate youth. But, notwithstanding all their indulgence, I shall have no peace of mind till I know my dear and ever-honoured governess has forgiven her poor, disconsolate, forlorn, affectionate, humble servant, till death, Lydia Melford. Clifton, April 6th. End of section 7